funny seeing you here. Today, we're gonna build one of these. Start to build. We definitely are not going to finish this staircase in one day. But if you hang out till the end of this video, I would like to share with you a very wise piece of advice slash different way of thinking about equipment, AKA the gin pole that you'll see me use in this video. A guy that I really look up to, that I've learned a lot from, that has taught me a lot, more than willing to help me anytime I call him, told me this one day whenever I was kind of quizzing him about how to price jobs. So I wanna share that with you at the end of this video. So stick around, we'll talk about it then. So here is the material that we're gonna be using for this project. We've got some 10 inch junior channel, and then we've got some 11 gauge floor plate that I had Stillwater Steel break for me. I got all this material from Stillwater Steel. For those of you who didn't know, I used to work at Stillwater Steel right after high school. That was my first welding job. I'm fortunate to have that connection. Uh, they've been real helpful to me over the years in a lot of different ways, but one of them being they have a brake press, a burn table. So any project that I'm doing where I can see that it would be nicer to have stuff broke or whatever, I use Stillwater Steel. And then we've got some two and a half square 11 gauge that I'm gonna be using for my legs, and then some inch and a half 14 gauge that I'm gonna be using for my hand drill. Okay, so full disclosure, for those of you who think that Austin Ross, A Ross Welding, does great work, good fabricator, good welder, I appreciate the compliment. And I do try very hard to do good work and get better every time, firm believer in it. But I haven't got here by myself. I have a lot of help behind the scenes. Kyle is one of those people. Kyle works at Stillwater Steel, and one of the things he does there is, does CAD drawings. He's very fluent at it, and I probably spent two hours at least. It felt like half a day, but I mean forever. Too long in my opinion. Trying to make sure I was laying out my stringers correctly. And I was on the right track, but I got to, I got to overthinking it, because that's what I do. I'm slow when it comes to angles. So I called Kyle, and I asked him a couple of questions to make sure I was doing stuff right. And he went one step further by literally drawing me a little sketch of my stringer to make sure that it was it was right. So I just wanted to bring that to the surface, give credit where credit's due. I appreciate all the help, Kyle, and everyone else who has helped me over the years and still help me to this day. So once I got everything laid out properly, I was able to start cutting my stringers.
So if you notice, I'm what my grandpa would call improvising. I don't have a fab table. I'm on site. I'm on unlevel concrete. This concrete's under a lane two. Not that this matters too much for what I'm doing here, but just so you know, this concrete is, is falling, if you will. It's not level with the world. It slopes in two directions here. All this to say, when working in the field, you gotta improvise. And that's what my grandpa told me all the time growing up when doing concrete work is improvise, improvise. And that's so helpful when it comes to being a mobile rig welder. And uh, so that's what I did here. Because this junior channel is about an inch and a half, it's got about an inch and a half leg on it. Uh, it wouldn't stay standing up in a jack stand. It would for a little bit, but then it would fall. <laughs> Learned that the hard way on the first set of stairs that you see already built here. So to make it a little bit easier, I stood them up on the piece of channel that I had left over and I tacked it and clamped it. Of course, got it square and whatnot, but then I tacked it and got everything into place and then started, started building it out. So I got all my treads tacked in, and I don't know if you noticed, but one of my jack stands had actually fallen, I guess from using the hammer to put these treads in. Luckily, through my years of experience, I've learned to eyeball my project, whatever I'm working on, from time to time just to make sure everything's still in the same plane, and I'm glad I did that before I welded anything out. Depending on the thickness of material, but also how many tacks you have on your project, you can get away with adjusting your jack stands to get everything level again, to get everything back in the same plane. Um, but if you wait till you have too many tacks or you happen to weld it all the way out, you won't be able to adjust it. So that is something that I've learned over the years. If it is tacked too good, if I do have too many tacks on it, I will use a zip disc or a torch to cut my tack so I can get my project back level or in the same plane. So now it's time to weld out the set of stairs here. What I mean by weld out is put more weld on, like put the finished welds because I've literally just got tacks on it right now. I am using 332 7018 for this project. I do use 332 6011 on like the handrail and stuff, but for most of the main structure on the channel and uh, everything else, 
Now that both sets of my stairs are done, I've got to build the platform. These stairs are going up about four foot to a platform and then turning 90 degrees to the left and then up to the destination at 95 inches tall. So this platform is going to be 48 inches by 48 inches. I'm building it out of six inch channel. I'm using 332 7018 on most of this unless I have a gap here and there. I will fill my gaps with 8010 
or 6010. I use 8010, but 6010 would be sufficient, 6011, anything like that, like a eighth inch or a 532. I will use that to fill my gap and then I will run 7018 over it. So whenever we started to lean in to more of this mobile welding work versus the pipeline work, about a year ago, I guess I would say, because up until then, I was waiting on another pipeline job, but pipeline work was still slow. We had bills to pay, so we had to lean into, you know, what I knew to do to so I could get some work and pay, pay our bills around here. So whenever I started doing that, I was looking at getting a piece of equipment, and I was wondering, like, how do I charge for a piece of equipment, you know? I didn't know necessarily how much to charge. I was looking at a specific job, you know. I was thinking like, well, you know, I know what to charge for my welding truck, but I don't know what to charge for this tractor if I buy this tractor or skid steer. And so I got to quizzing this real good friend of mine that does pipe fence and metal buildings. This is two main sources of welding work. And I got to quizzing him. I said, what do you charge for your, you know, your tractor, you know, when, when you're doing a job or this, you know, uh, skid steer or whatever. And this is what I wanted to share with you about what he told me. This is so interesting, so get ready for it. I had never thought about it like this because I'm used to being a, just a welder, you know, on a pipeline. You're just the welder. You don't have to have equipment. I mean, just your welder, right? You don't have to have a forklift or nothing out there on the pipeline. So he looked at me and he said, your equipment benefits you, doesn't it? And I was like, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean it benefits me? I was like, yeah, I guess so, but what do you, you know, explain, you know? To make a long story short, he went on to tell me that since he started his welding business 15 years ago plus, he said he's mostly always done bid jobs versus hourly rate. So his equipment benefits him, right? Because in short, your equipment helps you get the job done faster. And I had never thought about that because as a rig welder, I'm used to getting paid hourly. So I thought that was interesting. To break it down, if you've got a fence job and you've got to dig all your holes by hand, it's gonna take you way longer than if you had a piece of equipment that helps you take that time down 110 folds. It just made me think about equipment a lot different. So as I was building this staircase, it reminded me that this gin pole that I built for very cheap and that is available on the AROS Welding website as a digital print, you can build your very own and do the same thing I did here or any other project that the gin pole would help with. But I got to thinking about this gin pole and how it was benefiting me do this job faster. This place that I'm building the staircase for, they got forklifts but they're, it's a machine shop, so they're constantly using their forklifts. So if I would have been there building this staircase and then needed a forklift, what if I had to wait on it? That was time because, mind you, I did this job. I do, I do hourly work, but I also do jobs for a set price, bid jobs. So this job was a bid job, and so time is money, right? The quicker I get this job done, the more money I make per hour, right? So versus waiting on a forklift or taking the chance of waiting on a forklift, I've got this gym pole and I was able to use it to move these parts around and build this staircase. So it just really clicked for me, I guess, during this staircase that I'm building, how beneficial this gym pole was to my welding business, especially being a one-man band. But in my opinion, it all goes back to your business model. A guy could definitely offer just to do welding in other words, don't, don't take a job where you gotta have equipment. Like just say, look, call me when you need something welded. So I mean, it's all stuff to think about when it, go, when it comes to, to starting your welding business. That's one thing I wanted to share with you. I thought it was genius when he said that. So depending on your business model, that may or may not benefit you. If you're just doing hourly work, it may not benefit you. But if you're doing quoted jobs and time is money, you're not charging for your equipment. You don't have to put an hourly rate on your equipment you just say, I'll do a job for this much, and you know how much you can get done in a day with your piece of equipment, and the more efficient you get, 
the more money you make. Hope this all makes sense. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next Friday continuing this staircase build. And remember, learn something every day.